You guys are live whenever. All right, thank you. Uh, welcome everyone to the regular meeting of the Maritime Advisory Board of the City of Annapolis. Uh, we have uh, Andy Fegley, a member, Duncan Hood, another member, Frida Wildy, a member, Peter Trogdon, a member, Scott Allen, a member, and hi, Debbie, we have Debbie Goslin, a member. We also have joining us from the city staff, uh, Hope Stewart and Beth Mock, and we have our new court report, our new court, court reporter, it tells you what I'm used to, uh, our new uh, uh, recording secretary, Kim Consoli. So with that, we will uh, simply get into the agenda, which I uh, apologize. Thank you, Frida, uh, and I thank Scott for pointing out that it was not attached to the, what I sent on Thursday, and hopefully everybody got it uh, today. So if you, you notice that I forget to attach it, uh, something, uh, let me know sooner rather than later and I'll get it uh, get it out, but it was a hectic day. Um, approval of the minutes from the uh, July, I'm sorry, the August meeting. The minutes say June, but it's actually the minutes from the August meeting, which everybody should have a copy of. And we just had a chance to take a look at. Um, long discussion, a uh, lot about a uh, lot of discussion about the uh, uh, the uh, maritime task force report. Um, but um, is there a motion to accept the minutes? I so move. Second. Se second. All right. so any discussion, changes, or amendments to the proposed amend uh, the uh, proposed minutes? Hearing, hearing none, is there, hearing none, um, is there uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. No opposed. Minutes are from August 17th are adopted. Um, the MIAB, which is the county's board, um, we typically have a representative for that, and I'm hoping reaching out to see who would like to um, be the representative. I think their meetings are usually once a month, sort of. Uh, they've been, I think the last few were virtual anyway, but uh, I would entertain someone to participate just so we keep tabs on uh, what the county is doing. So who would like to, is there any of you like to, or should I just draw a name out of a hat? <laughs> <laughs> We could set, I frankly, we could set, probably it might not be a bad idea to set up a, we could set up a rotating schedule. Um, and that way everybody would you know, be obliged for. That way we all suffer. Terry, how often are there, are there meetings? Are they monthly? They're monthly, but sometimes they skip a month also. Uh, they're a little less um, regular, I think, than we are. Um, so, but they're monthly and they have been lately, they've been, they, like us, they've been virtual. But if, uh, when they do meet in person or when they are meeting in person, they will do it over at, um, it's over at the, at the, uh, Re the River Road complex. Duncan, was that waving your hand to say hi to Mike or was that waving your hand to oh, volunteer? I was saying hi to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to accept your volunteering. I know you were. You know, I would I would go through with a, a rotational thing, but I, I uh, honestly I don't want to commit to going each time. No, I I, I understand everybody's got the time constraints. So, uh, Frida, you asked that question as though you were contemplating it, but <laughs> I will. Uh, I think what I was I, just, just curious. I I would be happy to be part of the rotation, but I can't do it right every every time. Let me um, let me. Uh, maybe just set something up on an alphabetical order with, or, and I'll also find out if they're still meeting uh, what they're doing these days. Great. What um, day of the week do they meet? Is it consistent like ours? Yes, it is. Uh, well, not quite as, not quite as consistent, I think, but I think they've been meeting on, I think they thought they were meeting on Mondays for some reason. I can go back and look and see, hope you may know. Yeah. Mondays. Mondays. Mm -hmm. And it's like once a month. It is yes. Okay. Do you do you go to those? Do you attend those meetings? No, we don't from okay. the city. Okay. Um, 
but I will, uh, I'll get a little more details, but we'll set it up on a rotating basis. Um, and if there's something on the agenda that, you know, is, it doesn't affect us, we can, uh, we can deal with that and skip it or just get a copy of the minutes afterwards or um, see what happens. Um, economic you. development update. Hope, uh, I haven't seen Stephen the last couple of meetings. Are, are you staffing for him also? Um, he wasn't he there last? He was, he attended last month, didn't he? Um, you know what? He, that, yes. If I, look, okay. if I looked at the minutes, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, uh, we trade off. Um, okay. That's, which is yeah. fine. I just, I, that's, that works for me. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Is, so um, the economic development office, <laughs> we've been working with businesses who've been impacted by the tornado. We've been working to collect estimates on revenue losses in the hopes of trying to appeal to both the state or the federal government for an emergency declaration, but none of those have come through yet. So we're just waiting to hear back. So uh, in that regard, is there a plan to, um, I'm assuming there's a plan to, each of the businesses are planning to reopen, re rebuild and reopen? That's correct. Um, yeah, right now they're working with their insurance companies. Right, okay. Um, and what's happening with the, uh, I'll call it the recovery zones, but the, you know, basically the, the outdoor dining for restaurants downtown and in Eastport. And okay, so those are still continuing right now. We have them scheduled to continue on until November 1st. And is that weather? November 1st, you know, it gets cold and people are less willing to dine outside. So uh, but they that will is the current the schedule tent, that will. Hide in a tent with a heater. Yeah, well, well, we'll see. Yeah, the recovery zones are scheduled to end on November 1st. And is that true? Is that applied to Eastport as well as? Um... It does, all the recovery zones. Okay. Um, all right, anybody have any questions for Hope? Hope you can, you can leave if you would have something better you'd rather do than just sit and listen. <laughs> I'll, I'll listen for a little bit. Okay. Uh, Duncan, comprehensive plan status, any, any update? Not a thing, not a thing. I communicated with Eric a little while ago, uh, meaning about two months ago, and there's just nothing going on right now. All right, uh, on the Maritime Task Force update, I'm gonna defer that for, uh, to the end, uh, but, um, and Debbie, I think you have a little small update on the NDZ uh, yes. application process. Yep, um, Donna says that they are in the process of working with MDE staff and Sector Baltimore of Coast Guard to put together the changes to COMAR that are necessary for the state. And she anticipates that process will take a few months. And she anticipates that July 1st, 2022 would be the effective date for all recreational vessels. How about commercial vessels? I think she's looking at those, um, you know, on a one by one basis. Okay. Um, is there a, did she indicate whether there was a plan afoot to um, give a, give the voting public uh, adequate notice in advance? <laughs> or is the regulation going to go into effect? <laughs> uh, I did not talk to her about that. She didn't mention that, but it's a good question. Yeah, Beth. Um, has a Mike's got a question. Oh, okay, Mike. As, as part of the plan, as I remember when, when it was initially discussed, some of it was that, you know, the, the establishment of an NDZ would mean that the facilities were going to have to be improved or increased. Is, is that something that DNR is going to hit up? Is that something that the city has to do? I, I, mean, I don't, that's a, I can ask her that question, but I was. Pump out facilities in I, order to I, I think that the pump out facilities that exist meet that threshold. Got it. So no additional necessary pump out facilities. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Although we're looking for one with the city dock reconstruction to service right. boats down right. there. Yeah. So um, in that regard, Beth is the city um, and thinking about a rolling out at some type of a, I'll call it an advertising campaign or you know, working with the county uh, to, because I suspect the county probably just may not have a big interest in rolling out the, you know, much of an advertising campaign. Really, they don't have a 
you know, and they don't have a harbor master equivalent or any, any uh, you know, their own DNR police. So it's either DNR or your office that are going to be kind of stuck with this. So our team has been specifically <clears throat> excluded from enforcement, um, which doesn't mean we won't enforce it. It means we'll do the same thing we've always done. If you haven't pumped out in two weeks and you're at anchor, you can't stay here. So what we're not going to specifically uh, change any of our enforcement methods because that's gonna be left up to the state, natural resources police and the United States Coast Guard. So okay. for us, we're going to uh, focus our efforts on education. All right, but, the, but you will continue to do the, um, you know, at least keep track of those boats in city waters that have been here for two weeks and have not had a, with somebody aboard and not pumped out. We will, and that's better than any other waterway in the county, possibly the state. So we're gonna keep doing what we do. Okay, that's good. Um, I got a, turning to the Burtis house, um, I got a note from Ashley that the, um, that they're, they're slowly working through the uh, paperwork. It seems to be uh, that they're down to one easement and one, uh, I think one survey uh, that they're still working on. Uh, she did not have a timeline for the final transfer, but, um, it's uh, it, it was not imminent as of her email to me yesterday, or maybe it was today. So um, that it is moving along, but um, not imminent. I have one update on that. Okay. I had a really refreshing and productive meeting with Jim Muldoon and Rex Burney. And I think the mayor's version vision is to maximize the use at that pier in a way that it's not empty. And I'm, I'm excited, I'm really encouraged um, because we showed them our software, they're gonna be doing their bookings. And I, I hope what I saw at that meeting is gonna to come to fruition, it's gonna be good for everybody. That is uh, encouraging, particularly if we can uh, make this a multifunctional um, facility at the dock, it would be a and can, that would at least bring it in, in line with what was recommended in the city dock master plan uh, a couple of years ago. So that's uh, that's encouraging, and I look I for one look forward to uh, you know an, a more another positive update in a month. Anybody have any questions, Scott? Yeah, Beth, I heard uh, good things from meeting on the other end too. So that's great. Is that a, um, a new software you have for the scheduling things? I think it's terrific whatever it is. It's a little over a year old. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't received, the only person I've received bookings from, and I know I get that Annapolis Waterfront and Sailing Center still has that right of way, but I really like that team to start booking just to get used to the process. Mm -hmm. So um, Bill um, Highland has, right. book, has booked for Bull and Bear just to, just to walk through it, mm -hmm. just to do it. And uh, the form is on our website, it's so easy saves all your information and then we send you confirmation and um, it'll keep us. So just keep in mind that DNR has the first right to half that dock. And so what I don't wanna see happen is somebody to book, but DNR already in their mind they booked because they sent an email to the mayor but they didn't book through me. And now there's a double booking. So the icebreaker's there or for whatever reason, taken part of that dock and now your program can't move forward so we talked about all of that and everybody understood the importance of submitting the um the reservation form and i i think it, if everybody's willing to do the form it's going to be great yeah my, that sounds good to me and uh, i can help along the way let me know the question on the Burtis house beth you probably don't have the answer to it but the house itself is semi i don't know i don't know what you're where do you <laughs> derelict or not real strong on its foundation? Is have you heard anything what the plans are for the house? I heard that it might be moved or reconstructed, or have you heard anything on the street? I've seen drawings of the rebuild, but I have not had an update in quite a long time. So I probably couldn't speak to that yeah. intelligently. No problem. Yeah. Scott, the original uh, at one point the original plan was to um, 
re basically restore it, but also raise it. Above it has to whatever raise, I think, yeah, permits would, would require raising it right. um, just to get the permits. Not, ra not, not raising like tear down, but raise. Yeah, R A I S D E. Yeah, raise yeah. like elevate. Just, just um, yeah, exactly, because it's in the floodplain and everything else. So, right. and I heard one time that it might just get put on a trailer, move somewhere else to keep it the way it was, but I've heard nothing either. Uh, but, yes, Duncan. Um, Beth, is the plan for the waterfront center to book through you as well? So you guys share that doc? So that's my understanding is that the mayor wants the Annapolis Waterfront and Sailing Center to continue their programs, which are really vital to the city, but also that it doesn't sit empty. So if it's not booked, then somebody else can come in and book that. And uh, so what we really need to work on is some edits to Title 15 and a new policy for the long dock. So maybe it reads like 501c3s pay a small flat fee. Maybe they pay nothing whatsoever. But recreational boats that are coming there are paying the regular fees. Um, I, I think that's the vision, and that's what we have to work towards. Okay. Well, that sounds like the best of all worlds. Thank you. So, so Beth, good. that does raise. So, um, is, is there a is there a lead time constraint or a number of visits that you can book? And is there a I'll, 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 I'll refer to it as a penalty, or is there some uh, hammer for if you if you book but then suddenly don't show up so my my recommendation to the city and i i told the gentleman i met with is that i don't want people booking with no skin in the game it doesn't work well so i would suggest that we use our regular cancellation policy if someone books and then they cancel more than three days out there's no financial penalty whatsoever even if they were going to pay zero dollars in the first place but if you book and you don't show up within one to three days, you pay half of what it would cost if you were a recreational boat. And if you book and you don't show up 24 hours before you were uh, supposed to come in, you're going to pay the full price of what a recreational boat would pay. Because what we really don't want to see is people booking and not showing and the dock sitting empty. And Mr. Bernie definitely said, you know what, I can 100% agree with that. Everybody can plan and everybody can cancel. And those groups that are not paying can also cancel. So it just takes a little planning, but we just want to make sure the docks aren't empty. I, I think the taxpayers would like to see that happen. So is the plan yeah, then also that if there is an opening um, during the week or, um, you know, I, I don't envision it so much on the weekend, but if there is an if there is uh, an open space, the dock during the week, that you could then use it basically as overflow for a recreational boater that otherwise would have gone to one of the 20 some odd uh, slips at city dock? So I think that would also happen on the weekends. So uh, my, my belief is that the mayor um, would want uh, um, the programs to come first. So, um, so the programs would try to book out a year ahead. So maybe you know the Pride wants to come this week and this boat wants to come that week and that's booked out at the very beginning of the year. So they'll have to be a little proactive and plan. And then if their plans change, they'll have to book more than, they'll have to cancel more than three days out. And then we're gonna fill in with recreational boats and maybe commercial fishing boats, maybe parasailing boats, all kinds of other entities that were not allowed anywhere else on the docks. And then, if the Naples Waterfront and Sailing Center says, oh, we've had this great opportunity and the Providence can come and there's a hole, of course, we'll book that in as well. Um, so the idea is to book that dock the exact same way that we book all of our other docks, including our charter docks and our recreational docks, uh, with the caveat that the Naples Waterfront and Sailing Center comes first, except they don't exactly come first, they kind of come second because half of that dock in the, in the documents is DNR's first. So it wouldn't matter, and from my understanding, if Annapolis Waterfront and Sailing Center had this program, if John Gallagher calls me from DNR and says, hey, I'm, I'm invoking my right for one side of that dock and I want it from this state to this state, from my understanding, the legal doc says he gets it. But I would say that John Gallagher is a reasonable and uh, a very, a very good guy. 
So if I said, John, come on, it's really important. There's an up ringing or down ringing. Is there any chance you can move it a week? He will. In every situation where he can, he's going to cooperate. So I feel, I feel really encouraged. I feel really good about it. Beth, will you have um, insurance requirements for the boats that are there? I think that, I hope so. I think Ashley will hammer out the, the documents and I'm sure that they'll have to be approved by city council, but I think it would behoove many entities to have input as to what that long dock, we'll call that the long dock policy looks like. Because we want to make sure that no one abuses it. We want to make sure that it's fair for everyone. And I haven't drafted one yet because I've been so, so busy, but my intention is to begin to draft that soon. Okay. So would the, um, since if my recollection serves me correctly, that that dock is the only dock that could, that we can, uh, at which we can accommodate commercial vessels except for the charter dock for charter vessels and what whatever's already leased to watermark. But just a general commercial vessel that comes in, that's the only place it can go in the first place, isn't it? So given the current structure of Title 15, it may also not go there. So no boat that's commercial of any variety may go on any city dock unless we edit Title 15, which is a fairly simple process. So uh, even though the grant encumbrance does not cover the long dock or the Navy side of the short pier, the city's code specifies that there may, no, may not be any commercial activity, which would include museum boats that charge for tickets. Without so, a lease. Without a lease. Yeah, so, so what it says now is without a lease or um, use of the charter dock, and that is not the charter dock. So what's gonna have to happen is city council is gonna have to figure out how do we want to edit this to make sure um, you know, things work well at the long dock. And right now there is no commercial activity anywhere, but it is not cramped encumbered from the Navy side of the short pier and the entire long dock. And we also have a portion of the DNR pier now, which we, we actually own the whole thing, but we're giving DNR an easement. Right. Um, and that leads, at least for me, for my last question, uh, you, you uh, brought it up and I hadn't, uh, I, I, it, it had slipped my mind. But the last few weekends when I have been out on the water, um, I have noticed that we do have a parasail um, um, concession boat uh, that's running up and down the Severn. Is that created any particular, first of all, where are they operating out of? Yeah, I wish I knew. Um, he and I have butted heads many times because he keeps trying to do commercial activity and I keep telling him you're not allowed. So he is not, as far as I know, he has never been at our docks. Um, but he did come by last week and said, hey, thanks. We had a great season. And I'm thinking, thanks for what? But so I don't know. He's, um, operating, out of, he's operating out of 222 Severn, uh, okay. uh, the inside dock of the chart house where the, um, where the Schooner Liberté docks, same, same pier as the Schooner Liberté. But I think the boat actually lives somewhere outside the area because I saw him coming around Tolly Point last oh. Saturday morning at you know nine o'clock. Um, maybe he went for for fuel or something. He um, he's he's got a he's got a slip at at Cardi's Marina. Oh okay. His All guests right. could have plucked the uh, Windex off the top of our mast a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> they got very close. <laughs> Well, that's I, that. That was what was noticeable is on a couple of busy afternoons, they're just zooming up and down the Severn River, and I don't yeah. know how adept the the people that are you know sitting in the kite are maneuvering it if they have to. I think they totally rely on the boat to keep them keep them out of the, somebody's rigging. I think you're right. Yeah, with the driver, the sailor. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> kite border or something. Um, all right. Any, anything else on um, that, that topic? So the Burtis House update. Um, I had Ashley on here, but I'm uh, not Burtis House. I'm sorry. Status of Street Inn Parks. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so, uh, so we're continuing with our street and park work, um, much to um, my frustration. It's, it takes really a long time. It takes such a long time. Cheston is in the works. Sixth Street is in the works. Um, we have money and plans for third conduit, Amos Garrett. Oh gosh, what's the last one? Third conduit, Amos Garrett. Sixth and Back Creek. Yeah, so six is in the works. Did so is Cheston. Weston Apples? Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed. Western Apples? Um, no, that's not grant funded, but yes, I'm told that that's moving forward. I mean, it's uh, the most, one of the most difficult things about my job is that I don't have an assigned engineer. And so I get these sums of money and then I have to, I'm, I'm not a department head. So I have to try to get an engineer assigned to the jobs. And that takes time because they're overworked. So I'm not sure what the answer is. I know that Mike Johnson's very responsive and Betsy McKeon is doing such a good job, but I will tell you, oh, Thompson Street, sorry. Um, it, it is, it's challenging. It's really challenging to be a Harbor Master because I'm not an engineer. So they say, okay, you have like three days or six days or 10 days to apply for this grant. And I go out, you know, Tyler and I drive around and we're like, this could use a floating pier. This could use steps, but we're not engineers. So what we do is we pick a shotgun approach. We pick many different places so that if one project doesn't work, another project will move forward. And so we do, we all of our grant money for waterway improvements is all focused on street ends because that's the feedback we've received from the public as to where they want to see the money go. And so just as a recap, Sixth Street, Cheston are well in the works, and the four other projects are Amos Garrett, Third Street, Conduit, and Thompson Street. And Thompson Street is at the top of the list because their pier is quite dangerous. So, is there a um, is there a companion plan to update uh, market update uh, the public on these renovations to these street ends that they may be have been avoiding because of issues at Thompson Street. I mean, Sixth Street has never been a very welcoming uh, location uh, for the last 10 or 15 years at least. Um, but to let, let the public know, um, you know that these, these are being upgraded and that they are you know, accessible. I know that Mitchell and I spent quite a bit of time on the phone and she was supposed to do a press release and I apologize, but I didn't ever, I didn't ever double back to see what that looked like. Um, I didn't want her to overpromise because some of these sites, you when you get there, there's some challenges you can't overcome. Um, so I think that Mitchell's done some press releases. Um, I, I feel pretty confident about that, but I don't, um, I don't, I don't know. I know for sure these projects are moving forward like two to three years for each project, very slow. All right, and I, I raise it because there's a certain, uh, there's a, there, not a certain, there's a tremendous amount of um, interest in pressure for public access to the water, however you want to define that. Um, and we have this resource of multiple street ends, uh, mostly street ends, uh, although you've got Truxton and uh, Tucker Street too, but. Uh, mostly street end parks or facilities or at least space uh, that I that you know when you tell I, when I tell somebody in the, from the public that asked me about what are you going to do about water access I said well are you aware that there's 28 public access points of one sort or another in the city already and they kind of look at me with a blank stare um, so I think part of the clamor for public access could be eased a little bit uh, and the city to get credit for the fact that there is a lot of public access uh, capability out there. The, the people that seem to know it are the people that fish or crab off of them. Is there there is, and I think, I think the, the tough thing is that there are all these voices that get kind of loud about, oh, I want kayak racks, I want a kayak launch, I want this, I want that. But then when it's brought to like a public venue, um, 
the the neighborhood say no 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 not in my backyard i do not want this i will not support this and so things don't move forward which is sort of like probably pretty common with government well that's a good point that uh i know in years past there's been neighbors have complained that people come and park on their street to to launch their kayak and uh, it is a public street. <laughs> so, uh, Mike. So um, I know we're going to get to the task force after this, but uh, the, the group that I chaired, part of our ongoing discussions was a, really clinically about that, like about how do we inform the public about where they can do, what they can do on the water in the city, like which ones are good for dropping a line in the water, which ones are good for dipping your toes in the water and which ones for good for launching a paddlecraft. And as as part of that, I went back and forth with uh, Charles Hernick, who's the president of ECA right now. And you know, he said that perhaps we could come up with some kind of signage or even like the, you know, like the bronze plaques that they put for for the stormwater runoff to say, this is a public access point. And if it's, you know, if it's green, it's good for all three. Right. And if it's red, it's good for just, you know, walking up and taking a picture. And if it's, you know, blue, then this is a place where maybe you can do one or two of those things, but not the other. And if the city had that kind of signage at the at the public access points in the city, it might be, you know, you're walking your dog down the street and be like, oh, I didn't realize that was there. I can walk down and let the dog go in the water at at the end of First Street in Eastport and bam, then you've got that, right? Or, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll come and launch my kayak here. So long-term, I think that out of the task force, that's gonna be one of the things that improves everybody's overall knowledge. And Eric has been working really hard at cataloging the sites and, you know, how big they are and what kind of uses are, are best for them. And, you know, I, I think we're gonna have a good product out of it after the end. Well, that's encouraging because it's always sort of been a, uh, a hidden gem that a lot of people didn't know a lot about, uh, except those of us that either came around by water or actually walked our dog down there and said, oh my goodness, guess what? I got the dog can chase a ball here. Right. Yes, uh, Lafayette turned out great, by the way. I'm sorry? Lafayette turned out great, by the way. If, if okay. anybody hasn't been by there since the, since the city redid it, it's, uh, I mean, talk about a gem. That's a, that's a really unique spot and, and they really improve that water access. Thank you, Mike. My, my only disappointment is I really want to do, I really want to do a um, living shoreline to keep that erosion back and I cannot seem to get DNR to cooperate. So I'm, I'm still working on that. Scott. Um, yeah, that's sort of going along with Mike's uh, report. I, I think it's great if they can catalog the street ends as to what they can be used for best or the, you know, opinions <coughs> from the experts of what street would be good for if we are uh, advertising or hoping for visitors to come to town to possibly use these street ends it might be good to have that cataloging and locations on the city website too i'm assuming people look at the website before coming to annapolis if they've never come to annapolis before might just I think be that's part of what eric's working on or i, I think eric may have an uh eric lashinsky might have an intern working on exactly that like how, how to the catalog and then you can put it on the website as well as on signs on the street ends but just to get more exposure for the town well good um i look forward to seeing more signs in eastport <laughs> um all right that segues into the task force um it is um slowly but surely working its way th through the the um, legislative process. Um, the, as you all may recall, uh, last month, we voted unanimously to approve the task force report and, and, and the strategy set forth in that. And I sent the um, legislative referral report over uh, to the Office of Law, and that's part of the legislative package for the task force strategy. Uh, it turns out that um, the Office of Law, I, I understand, has um, basically opined that there needs to be a, that there is a sequence uh, to be followed in the changes. And that sequence is to adopt the strategy um, as proposed 
uh, or as amended um, first, and then that then becomes part of the an official part of the current comprehensive plan, which we're still operating under because the new plan hasn't been presented or adopted. And then since it is part of the comprehensive plan by law, then changes to zoning can be made. Now, changes to use tables can be made, but I think the Office of Law views the, the number of changes and the breadth of the changes that are taking place as really being uh, more like zoning changes than like just changes as use tables. Um, and so there is a council, uh, the council is taking up uh, a resolution on Monday, the 27th, uh, for the purpose of um, adopting the, the Maritime Task Force strategy. And so to the extent that, and I mentioned this in my earlier email, to the extent that anyone, um, and the more the merrier, uh, can come down to City Hall, I d don't know that it's whether it's, and Hope, you may know the answer, is that are they back to everything is now in, in person or are they still doing a hybrid or? Sorry, I couldn't get off of mute. I believe they're doing hybrid. Okay. So I guess check the website to see whether or not you can sign up if you want to do this um, uh, remote or come down to city hall and uh, it's, you, you get three minutes. You don't have to take three minutes, but certainly any input, particularly from uh, members of this board uh, in their individual capacity or any members of the industry that you can encourage to come down and support the strategy. Keep in mind that the strategy is not the legislation and the devil will always be in the details, but at this adopting, you're not gonna get legislation of any sort, basically, unless you adopt the strategy. So it's important that the strategy gets approved and adopted. And then we can move on to the various components of the uh, implementation, which is the, the um, zoning implementation, which is 02521, the water access implementation, the workforce um, implementation. Um, and each of those would be, will follow uh, along behind, with, uh, behind the strategy. So uh, that's the overall picture of where it is at the moment. Uh, as I also indicated in my um, uh, email, the rules committee it has yet to take up 02521 and it is likely uh, that that would not occur until after the, it, it will not occur until after the 27th um, in which uh, at which time uh, 02521 can go to the rules committee. Now we're in a bit of a time crunch because once, because this is an election year, there's a cutoff there, there. Any legislation that is not adopted as of, I think, election day, or there's a cutoff automatically dies and has to be reintroduced. So it is uh, possible that the, we're gonna be faced with a time constraint um, that says this legislation will be reintroduced uh, right after the, a, the council, man, uh, the mayor and council elections in um, in November, and th they are sworn in. I think the first Monday of December is the time frame. Um, so, with that said, um, and with the with the thought that there's going to be amendments, and the rules committee hasn't taken it up, I have def uh, indicated in my email that we're going to defer the nuts and bolts of O twenty five twenty one until it's sort of ready. Uh, to be looked at um, substantively, but I did provide everyone with the a copy of the Planning Commission's recommendations. And interestingly enough, the Planning Commission um, had, if you look at their recommendations uh, and their recommendations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I was looking to see eight, nine, I think they had, 10, 12 um, recommendations, They're, they are sort of categorized, they fall into sort of different categories. One is um, the public access component and they have several recommendations on uh, public access. Uh, they, they do endorse an, uh, a strong enforcement, which um, 
was proposed uh, and which I gave some input on that needed to be strengthened. Um, the incentives, which are in the zoning code, they had a couple of recommendations on that. Uh, the primary one big recommendation was to be, um, is to take the incentives from 5% to 10%, um, which actually probably makes the incentives more, it probably incentivizes the incentives. Um, and then there's some, um, they're, they were very specific about no large, no restaurants larger than 2,000 square feet uh, in WME and Eastport, uh, and that a um, it was a recommendation. Um, where was the recommendation? Um, I believe there was a recommendation that the a, a, re, a restaurant. <clears throat> excuse me, restaurants in WMI need to have a, uh, uh, a, a water access component. Although I think, frankly, if you've got water access, if you're going to a restaurant on the water, I guess you can think about that as water access. Um, so a variety of recommendations, but primarily the recommendations don't deal, don't address, uh, didn't make recommend, recommended changes really to the zoning. They were more focused on the public access enforcement um, and uh, funding aspects of it, uh, of, the, um, of the strategy. Uh, but everybody has a copy. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at the copy, read the copy, um, what the planning commission recommends. Um, if, if we get into a time push in terms of 025-21, where it is, um, uh, imperative that we we review it and provide our recommendations in more substance. We would likely do a um, uh, do a special meeting uh, to do so, um, and so at least have in mind or send to me if you've got any thoughts on uh, any of the provisions of O twenty five twenty one. Jot them down, keep them in mind. Uh, we will we are likely to visit it uh, either. Uh, before the, elect the general election or after the general election. Um, so that's really the update, uh, the non-update on the Maritime Task Force and where we are at this point. Um, Mike, you were on the, one of the, you were chair of a committee. Do you have anything to add or that I overlooked or that uh, I may have been incorrect on? No, I think you're on it. And I, uh, and I, and I briefly looked over the Planning Commission, I, I, I think that largely, um, despite like this, some of the pushback we were getting when we presented to the Planning Commission as a task force, they they came through largely in agreement with what we suggested. You know, it, it, it was the, it was part of the argument all along that the incentives should be increased to encourage people to take advantage of them because it was going to be a benefit for the community. I think that enforcement was one of the things that was oh that was brought up over and over again it's it's one of the things that you know the the community feels that the city trips over sometimes we, we create these rules but then well, when it comes down to it we don't necessarily you know lock down on them i i, I think it's it's there um you know i would i would love to see it supported at the, at the city council meeting on monday because i think that the strategy is pretty clear this is this is something that's worked for the city of Annapolis. It's something that's worked for the maritime industry for, for all of these years. It is something that needs to be updated. And this update leaves room for, you know, let's let's figure out where the help is needed most right now. And let's let's leave room for, for help for the ones that need it in the in the second phase, you know, after we figure out, you know, where all the dust clears. So for me, I, I think that Monday is really important. Um, and you know anybody who wants to come out and, and say their piece, I, I think that Monday is the time to do that, if, whether virtually or in person. I, I'd, I'd welcome you to come. The uh, you you did make a uh, you mentioned something that uh, triggered uh, one of the one of the uh, great recommendations from the planning commission, and we had talked about, uh, and it was it in, it was addressed in, in part in the uh, in O twenty five twenty one. Is that the it, that the uh, zoning uh, system must be reevaluated at five years, so we don't get locked into this kick the can down the road for the next thirty five years or thirty four years before we look at it again. With, 
and right with no no clarity for for a property owner to be like oh well so i'm i'm stuck with this for you know for 30 something years even though it, it may not be tenable for me i i think that that was the biggest piece of it that came out was that you know 30 years might be too long for <laughs> you know for a revisit as the climate changes as an, and as the tenants change right so you know maritime office is is a is a wiggly thing you, you do boat loans or you're a maritime attorney or you know those types of things like are they are they a fit for the districts and you know how do we fit them in and and i think a lot of that just comes down to standards the big changes will happen with the with the legislation and then the tweaks can happen on a more regular basis to make sure that we're adapting to the industry and i, I think it's a really good product i'm i'm, I'm happy with it yeah good i have a comment sure can i make a comment so you know i spent some time with uh, cardi templeton and mike on the phone and they both explained to me that because of the stakeholders that were part of that uh, uh task force um they had a lot of a lot of players that were um, not maritime, but concerned about easing the restrictions, and so they came up with this what I'd consider, you know, a a, a good compromise. But my question to to our group, um, if our job is to is to support the future of the maritime industry and protect protect the maritime industry, um, uh, I think that. I think that there ought to be more, as, as I said last time we met, um, you know, in five years time, they're going to revisit this. Well, there's, there's a ton of maritime properties that, that have no advantage. They get no advantage from this. Um, there's the, the triggers are for the big guys, um, like uh, Rod's, Rod maybe get a, a restaurant or, or those kind of things, but there's no advantage to um, small maritime owners like myself and many others. Um, so I think that that's something, or do we, do we, uh, philosophically, do we have some, uh, are we to look after the maritime industry? Um, you know, we don't have those, uh, compromises. We don't, if that's our, if that's our role, um, uh, I think we, we should ask for more, but, um, uh, because we don't have those, uh, other stakeholders that are, that are, um, that are not looking out for, um, that maybe have a different view. So I, I don't know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I like it. I said, I like it, I approve, but I think it should go further. I think, think that it ought to benefit more uh, maritime property owners. So, um, and, and this has been a very, very uh, arduous discussion. Um, I think somewhat at the task force, but also conversations that I've had with, um, with Eileen and uh, some of the staff about the fact that there are certain properties, no matter, and, and it's not a question of large or small, it's a question of location in the zones that simply can never have a fuel dock, can never have a travel lift, can never have uh, a marine railway because they're not on the water. And, um, you know, the, the, your, your property, Scott's property, the properties along, uh, um, Severn Avenue um, in the, the 100 block, 200 block, 300 block of Severn Avenue on the, you know, some of those properties, a number of those properties do not have access to the water. Um, one of the things that I discussed with Eileen um, was, do we, um, do we carve out a subcategory of the zoning um, for so instead of WME, all everybody WME, you're WME one and WME two. Uh, now I'm not a big fan of creating new uh, zoning districts, but but do something uh, sooner rather than later. And I don't and I agree with you, Peter, that waiting five years is probably not the time frame. And uh, those particular properties should be addressed within the next year, um, so that I can understand not addressing them as part of this right now because there just was not a solution that was uh, we could come up with but um but i do believe that when we get this legislation certainly one of our recommendations that i would support would be to uh make sure that at least as to the properties that are 
non have non water water access or waterfront that they that the zone that the zone be looked those properties be looked at um, within a much shorter time frame than the five years. But just hope you to know, remember that when remember that I said that when we come back <laughs> and have to make our formal recommendations. Uh, uh, and I, so, but that's just my thinking. I mean, I, that has been a topic of discussion. It was not overlooked. Um, it was just a, a it was a, um, omitted by, uh, it, was, it was omitted because it, it just didn't fit into what trying to get something passed in the short term. Okay. Yeah, well, I agree with you, Peter. And there, are, and there were three, I mean, if you look at it, the task force, hold on, I'm talking. There, there, there were three very strong personalities in the room for, for every meeting, right? It was property owners who, uh, who knew that they needed the flexibility going forward. There were industry people who wanted to absolutely maintain the, the maritime zones. And, and then there were residents who didn't want to see things explode and, and have these marinas turn into uh, nightclubs and bars and restaurants and and you know the the, the compromise came gradually I mean gradually when did we start this Terry in, in November of last year it was like November December and and there was a lot of back and forth and 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 you know my my position is unique because I I am a resident I'm also a tenant and uh and I'm a maritime business owner so I was in a lot of the, the, the small sub meetings, you know, like, oh, so Mike, we need you in an industry meeting. And then, oh, well, Mike, we need you in a, in a residence meeting. Oh, and, and Mike, could you sit in with Cardi and explain the struggles that she's going through as a, as a landlord? And, you know, everybody was dug in at a certain point and, and it, it didn't look like it was going to come to a, to a really workable solution. And, it, and um, I think where we were, I mean, the, the biggest trouble, Peter, to be honest, the biggest trouble would be to figure out what to do with a site like yours that doesn't meet a trigger, what to do at a, at a site that, at the property where Scott used to own that, that didn't have a tri trigger because they were landlocked. And, and I think what, what we worked on was trying to figure out the incentive program to make it work. And you know, that's I think the devil in the details going forward is gonna be in those in those incentives and in potentially the uses that could be considered maritime at, at those properties and and I think that those are things like Terry said that that should be reviewed more frequently than every five years I think that we look at the, the industry as a whole I think that the big pieces of it you know um, Susan Zeller's piece of you know she's she's trying to create through their uh, internship program, more maritime operators who are going to need space that's that's potentially the boon for property owners who need to fill that space uh, and, and the guy who's taken over muller marina on the corner here is a is a really good example right that's so a bobby muller was getting ready to you know move on to, to greener pastures and he's got a group of young guys down there who are doing top-notch maritime work at that facility and and i i think maybe eight or 12 months ago, we might have thought, well, if Bobby Muller's leaving, then that yard is going to sit empty, right? Because not a lot of people looking to take on a small yard without a big footprint and, and do that kind of service work with a, with a crane and a, and a small well, but those guys are doing it. So I, I think the solutions are there. I think the pieces are in place. I think that the fund is, is you know, th there needs to be a lot worked out in it, but it could work for everybody the fund and the training programs and a commitment to maritime, which I think the strategy is really clear about. I think that that's where the help comes and the ability to revisit it. Enforcement and revisiting. Good work, Mike. Good work. All right. Me. There, were, there were a lot of people, but yeah. Um. Any other comments, questions? Well, we've managed to hold it to just under an hour. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Ah, I see Mr. Fagley and Mr. Dun Duncan Hood has seconded. Uh, so with that, is there a vote to adjourn?
Hi. 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 Everybody enjoy what I hear is going to be a lovely weekend this weekend. You We're finally getting a break. So it's taco night at the Woods House. Get out on the water. Get a, go down to that public access. Uh, put your toes in the water.